Okay, today I'm going to just give you a demonstration of the systems on the inside of the van. I've walked into the van right now, everything's turned off. So right here is the Xantrax, this is the controller, and you can see there's nothing in the window there. Here, you get back just a little bit right there, okay. okay? So I'm going to push this button, hold it for a second, and now it says it's powering up, you can see. It's going to go through its little cycle. And I've got 383 amps, and I'm already using a half an amp because that's just the system. So now we're going to walk over here, and we're going to hit this Use Store button. We hit Use. And then that brings this up into power. Okay. And then, because it's pretty hot out here, we're going to turn the air conditioner on. You can see it's 98 degrees in here. The van's been sitting out in the driveway. We're staying at our, our daughter and son-in-law's house right now, and the van's been sitting out in the driveway all day in the sun, 98 degrees. It's hot here in, in, uh, in Texas. So I've got that running, and over here on the solar, I'm going to turn that on, and you can see it'll start making power here. But I'm also going to go ahead and turn the lights on here so I don't use this flashlight. So there we go. Okay. So now you can see me with lighting. Okay, if you come over here, you can see that the air conditioner right now, along with everything else that's on, the lights and that, there's not much, but, but that's all pulling right now about 94 amps an hour, 97 amps, 100 amps. And it's kind of, it's really, really hot out. So you can see that if I had full 600 amp hour of battery, that I would only have five hours or so and that believe me about a hundred that personally I don't want to go down below 200 amps so I have four hours of running the air conditioner like this but to make things better when you first get into your van and it's really hot out like this the best thing you can do is to come up front and start the engine so not only, let me just turn that down for a second. So not only am I charging the batteries, I can also run the dash air. And you can run it at full power. So that's gonna help cool the van down, so it's gonna blow cold air here, plus the air conditioner in the back. So it's a little noisy. It's noisier actually than the, the other air conditioner. But we're gonna turn that on and we're gonna move. Okay, so now you can see that with the engine running, Instead of it just saying like 100 amps, it now says plus 33, and it's climbing a little bit. So it means that the engine is covering all the power needed to run the air conditioner, plus I'm adding in amps into the battery. It says 46 right now. But that'll change uh, as it engine idles. It'll start out fairly low, work its way up, and then it'll work its way back down again. But basically right now, I'm putting in 50. So that's, that's all good, okay. So, back to running the systems. Uh, I showed you how to turn, well, what you got? My wife here's got a question. Okay. All right. Use the better now. Okay. <laughs> Spike's really old treat bag. Yeah, okay. So I, I showed you how to start the batteries, how to turn this panel on, how to use the uh, store switch, this is my solar controller. Uh, this turns on the solar panels. And you can see right now I have 13 volts. If it just has an A, that's how many amps you're making at the moment. And if it says AH, that's how many amps it's made over a period of time. And it'll start in the morning when the sun comes up, it'll start making those amps. And then when the sun goes down, it'll stop making them but it'll tell you how many amps you made the day. So you might see like a 80 here or a 60 or whatever. But, so there's, this is the solar controller. And So we've only made 0.5 amps today? No, that's because I reset it when I powered it off and back on. Oh, it's, okay. it's made a half an amp since I turned it on a few minutes Five ago. Five minutes ago. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Um, this right here is the Truma. If you push it in, you'll see that the little icon for the RV is blinking. 
that means you've selected that one. If you roll it, it selects the different ones. So if you come back here, if I press it in, it says off because the heater's off. If I turn it up to here and then press it, now it's going to heat the RV coach, the, the cabin here, to 40 degrees. And you can say, oh, that's not, not enough. You know, you can, you can bring it all the way up. I don't like to heat it more than 62 because 62 is pretty warm. I mean, in the relationship, it's not truly 62, it's just a number. And at 62, it's pretty warm. So we turn it back off, and you can press that, and you can see, yeah, it's off. So you can press it again. Now for the water heater, you just roll it over here. You press that, and my water heater's off. So you can roll it to eco, hot, or boost. If you just want hot water, eco's fine. Uh, if you want to make it hotter quicker, you might use the hot or the boost. But that's, that's good. When you turn it on, you need about 30 minutes for it to heat up that water. So we're going to turn that back off. I don't need any hot water. This is the fuel source. I can either have gas, a mix one, mix two, electric, electric too. So you can either use all gas or all electric or a mix of gas and electric. And the two is, I guess, I'm not sure it's exactly how that works, but it's, it's um, if, you're, if I'm in a campground, I'm gonna use electric. If I'm on the road, I'm gonna use gas. Just for the fact that the, the electric you need to be hooked up or it runs your battery down. And then over here, this is your fan. You have vent or off. I leave it off. Uh, if I turn on vent, the fan will come on right now and we'll vent that out. But in off, it will automatically start. You can come down here, you can do your clock for having it come on and off at certain times. But basically all I use is the coach or the water heater. And I leave it in gas, unless we're in a campground. So that's basically all of that. The Xantrex here, this is a whole nother product that I just turned it on because in this mode in the window, here it says DS inverter. If I press that, it turns off the inverter. Now it says EN inverter enable. So if I press that now, it turns the inverter on. But you can get out of that screen and you'll have to use these buttons to get back. But for example, don't use this to turn off your inverter. You would think that that would do it. Don't, don't, I, I wouldn't even touch this button unless you have a problem. But as long as it says DS invert or IN invert, that's all you need. See, I just turned it off. I mean, E and for Engage enable. Or enable. Enable it. or disenable inverter, right? Right. Uh huh. So you want to leave it there. Uh, you can also, by pressing this function button, now every time you push it they do different things, but when you press that function button and you see a PS10 or a PS15, you hit the up, PS20, that's how you adjust your input if you're like on a different, a different um, an outlet. Like if you're at somebody's house and they say, I have a 20 amp outlet you can plug in. You put it to 20, but me, I like to go cautious. If they say they got a 20 amp, I'm gonna put it on 15. If they've got a 15 amp, I'll put it on 10. And what that does is it will take 80% of that number. For example, if it's 10, you'll pull eight amps off of their circuit. So I feel safe doing that. Um, and then you can press this again, and now you're at that enable inverter because the inverter's off. There's no green light there. If I push that, the green light comes on. It's now making power. And you can look back here and you can see the easiest way to look also is that the microwave comes on. If that light's on, you know you're making 120 volts off your inverter. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off. Okay, so it's off. And now you look at this and there's no light on because the inverter's turned off. Okay, so let's go back. There's just two more things up here. This is your Wi-Fi extender, and then your 
uh, freshwater tank heater. Because the freshwater tank's outside, if I turn this on, or go on like this, it's gonna turn on the water heater, um, the tank. There's like a little heating pad out there, and that'll heat the, the tank, the water, to keep it from freezing. So that bas basically covers everything except for that. <laughs> this right here is a sensor, and that's where the furnace reads the temperature in the coach. So if it's if the if the uh, trim is on and you're heating, it reads the temperature here. Okay, so um, not down on the floor where it's blowing out. It no, really hot. Reads it right there. Okay. If you're running the air conditioner, like I'm doing right now, the, right here is where it reads the temperature. This is above above the ottoman in the back. This little thing right here, that's the sensor that reads the temperature. So let's just go back up to the control panel. So now that I just showed you everything how it works, we'll just have a look at this control panel. Because this, this is right here is where you run a lot of the systems on the, on the uh, RV. If you hit the home button, it'll show you, look, it's 96 in here. Temperature's dropped already. Uh, a few degrees. It shows the chassis batteries, 14 volts. The house, the chassis is the engine, you know, the Ford part. The house is the the, the lithium battery. I have lithium batteries. Uh, the gray tank, I'm 90% full. I'm 80% full of my black, and I have 25% fresh water. And this is the propane for the LP. You turn on your water pump like this. If it's blue, it's on. If it's gray, it's off. The awning is locked right now because the ignition's running. And if I were to go into my, um, okay, the lighting package here, you can see off, it turns everything off. And then you can kind of come in here and you can do this. Now when you turn that off, if you turn it back on, it just brings back what you had last. So we'll just turn everything back on. Now if you turn it off, it brings everything on. That's the light pack, the light switch here. This is the control for the climate, for the air conditioner. Turning this, tapping this, will turn on the air conditioner if it's gray. If it's blue, tapping it will turn it off. And this is how you adjust your temperature. And in auto mode, the fan's gonna go up and down. It's at 100% right now. If I turn off the air conditioner, See this little blue right here, that says it's air conditioner. It's light, it's lit, it's blue, and it looks like a snowflake. It's cooling right now. And it's gonna cycle off in a second. Now, it just shows the fan is running. Because the fan's on auto, it's gonna take it a second to shut off. And then once it shuts off, the fan will be gone. The fan's gone. If, you're, if you just wanna have the fan on without in the air conditioner, if this is an auto, you can't do it. But all you do is you just touch like this. Now the fan's gonna come on at a 45% fan speed. It'll just take it a second to come on. Yeah. It's a good choice to yeah. run at night. Sometimes uh, we don't run the air conditioner, we just run the fan if we just want a little uh, yeah. air to move a little bit so it's not stuffy in here. And the fan's running, you just can't hear it. I'll put it up to 100%, and now you can hear it. It's a very quiet fan. I said, the engine air conditioner is quieter, is louder than the coach. I'm gonna turn that back on cool. The little snowflake came back on, the compressor it's kicked on. on. auto. And we'll put that back to auto. Yeah. Okay, so, um, oh, and then here's your settings here. Uh, you, you can change your time. If it's three o'clock or four o'clock, you just adjust that. You can put it in 24 hour time mode if you like that. So it's 1501. Uh, if you want to clean the screen, if you touch it, it's going to do stuff. So if you put it like this, now you can you can rub the screen, nothing's going to happen. And it looks pretty dirty because I still have the plastic on it. And that's going to revert back to um, screen setting. At least it's supposed to. 15 seconds. There we go. Uh, these are your different. You can set your brightness of the screen. We like it fairly low. Or you can change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And you can also look at different uh, items and see what's in here. Right now we have a 
it's selected. The floor plan is a 22C Li3, and we have a Pro Air. We don't have a generator, so that's like that. And then you can tell what's got power going to it right now. If it's got a green light, it's, it's, it's a good symbol. Like the, this is green, this is green. So, and then your outputs. My ceiling lights are on right now. Uh, these these are the lights that are on that, that are lit up. For example, hopefully that covers all this. If you got any questions about this part or this right in here, let me know. Uh, we're going to get into some other components now. So, working our way toward the rear, and I'll make a loop and come back forward. Standing in the kitchen, we have the induction cooktop. Now, in order to use the induction cooktop, it has to have power to it. You can see right now, there's no light there. But if I turn the inverter on, I'll use my long arm. All right, now there's a little red light right here. So I know that we have power. And the only way this will come on is if you put a metal object on it. It has to be like a, a pot. And you set your temperature. I'll let my wife, she can explain all this to you better. So I hit the, actually I hit the power button. Yep, you hit the power button. And it wants me to do something now. So I'm gonna cook by temperature, I like to do that. And it starts out at 270 and you can raise it by 30 degree increments. Yeah. And it works real well. So it'll be boiling soon. Yeah, so you've got it heating by temperature. Mm-hmm. And you have it at 360. Yeah. And there's just a little bit of water in there. And it looks like I already see a couple of bubbles in there. Yeah. Uh, they might be just bubbles from the I pan. I don't see it getting it actually gets red and it'll beep if you take it off but if you put your pot back on it resumes the same heat that you had just selected so that's kind of a nice thing I had an old induction where you would have to reset the heat so this one's good I can I can feel it getting hotter in there it's mm -hmm. it's already getting hot so if we want to turn it off so it's yeah. boiled we're gonna turn it off just hit this button yeah and you can actually see there are some bubbles that are forming in the pan it's hot yeah, it's hot. It's hot. Okay, so that's the induction cooktop. And uh, give me the cover again. But you don't want to put that on until it cools off. Well, actually, the cooktop is it's cool. Still, it's still but it's kind of hot from the pot being it's there. It's still hot there. But see, I'm touching it. Yeah, but so, let it cool for a second. Okay. That's how it foam. Yeah. All right. uh, so in your sink, you have a, a faucet, cold or hot, you know, on or off. Usually, I use cold because I usually don't bother putting on the water heater. And a lot of times when I want to, and I don't use, I try not to use much water. So many times I will just take a cup and heat some water in the microwave to wash out a few things. We'll do that okay. Out. So there's that. You want to show the drawer? And it does come with a cover. Yes, we left it at home. Which we left it home because when I'm driving, I like to put Spike's water dish in here because we've noticed one time we said, why is the carpet wet up front? And it's because Spike's water dish was sitting back here and it was sloshing the water was sloshing as we drove and there's spike right now hiding <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, anyway we we leave it at home and so you say well I might need that for extra counter space but we just I put things here on the lagoon, lagoon. yep so right. that's what we do we okay. put a few little hooks up here we haven't done a lot of mods just a couple hooks mm -hmm. uh, paper towel holder we managed to live within the constraints of this rack. Some things are too tall. Okay. Some things are fine. And we've got the drawers here. We got uh, just the stuff in them that we need. Nothing special. Nothing special. But let's look at. I'm not. I haven't been uh, doing wonderful storage in these drawers. I. That's just not me. <laughs> I don't. Okay, so that's. And the up here, it's not so great either. Yeah. So that's the stove and the sink. Mm -hmm. And the next thing right here, this is your your uh, remote control. This powers the, the ceiling fan right here. If you press it, it'll open it up and it'll come on to max speed. And then you can... You have to have a window crack though if you're running it. Yeah. 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 
because it's got to have a... Correct that front window. Yeah, it's got to be pulling the air from it's somewhere. Come from somewhere. So we got that, and then you can adjust the speed up or down, or you can set it for a temperature. And you can also, if it's off, you can just open and close the lid, you know, the cover. So it's closed. You can push this down, and that'll open it without turning the fan off. And you can press it again. Yeah. And that'll close it. So that gives you two options, just mm -hmm. letting it vent, and then you don't have to have the windows open, or running the fan with a window open, or like we were saying, run just the fan on the air conditioner, because we do that at night a lot. Right. Because we just want the air to yeah, blow just move us. around. Or run the air conditioner. Important item to remember. Spike, come here. Spike, right here. Spike. Sit over here. Come on. Spike. Right here. Sit. Come on, buddy. Spike. Right touch. Sit. Come on, Spike. Touch. Okay, right there. Good boy. He said he's not in the camera view that way. He wanted to be on the camera. There You're you on go. the camera, okay, Spike? Everybody can see you, Spike. Everybody can see you now. Okay. So anyway, this is a very important thing to remember. Y you can be sitting on this sofa. Sit, buddy. Sit. And you can reach the button, which is right here, which will move the sofa down and turn it into a bed or raise it back up. But don't do that. The, the mechanism that powers this is not designed for all that weight. It's designed just to move the bed, not weight. So get off the bed, keep Spike over there, and lower it down. And you're certain it's clear back there. Yep. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's the uh, lowering of the bed. Now, to fill in the cushions here, It takes two tabletops, and one of them is the lagoon table here. So you take that off. I like to put that like this, okay? And basically, there's two little lips on here. Let's see how it's bite. This little rail right here. You just take this and you set it in between them, just like that. There's another table up front, and it goes in here. So this right here fills in the bed. And then at this point, you would take your mattress, these covers. You take off your lagoon leg. <laughs> yeah, you would take off, yeah, a, yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to sleep with this, you know, in bed with you. Yeah. Which is not the best thing. Have you, uh, do you think you need to show people how, or mention how, the uh, lagoon cranks? Yes, I'll do that in a second. Yeah, so then you just take confusing. these, you turn them like this, you put them in here, you fold this one down, and you kind of just pop them up and push them together like this, and that fills in for the whole bed. This is the lagoon table leg, and... Get around to you, we'll see. Yeah. It's got a little lever right here. If you pull this lever out, you disengage the teeth, and it, it'll turn freely. So if you want to loosen it, you bring it up here, and you, and you, you turn it like that. Pull it out, turn it again, and now it comes off. And you can see as you turn it this way, it tightens it, and this way it loosens it. So when you put it on here, you can adjust it fairly high if you want the table high or you can put it down really low if it's really low though your knees won't go underneath it so we like to have it about about this high and you just tighten it up like that so now it's tight and it's right there so now to put this back I like to I like to loosen it up a little bit and just swing it out so I can see it and just put it like that and it's done now, when you're driving down the road, it can swing around on you. So what I'll do is I'll just tighten it up. And now it's, it's not so free. You know, you can make it where it's, it's pretty solid. The next thing is uh, entertainment. 
Oh, well, look at this first two. This is your window shades. You can see that the bottom, some of them are upside, or the opposite direction. Some have the bug screen on the top, and some have the solid on the top. Ours are on the top. Um, I kind of like it this way because when we're parked somewhere, if this is down like that, I can, and I'm laying in bed, I can just roll over and look out the window if I hear a noise. But when we park, we always bring the curtains down too. So still, if I hear a noise, I can just lift up and look out. Not that you happens a lot, but you never know you're in a parking lot at a Walmart and you just hear something going on, you want to look. It's usually not a bad, it's hardly ever been a bad noise, it's just a noise that you're curious about. Yeah, like, what is that, a train going by 12, 12 feet behind us? Which has happened. <laughs> or is that a parking lot sweeper going back and forth? Yeah, parking lot sweeper. That's a good one. Yeah, and the train 12 foot behind us, yeah. In the, yeah. In the ravine. The train was really interesting. We had a train behind us one time, we had a cracker barrel up in... Uh, Stanton, Virginia. Stanton, Virginia. The train track was below the parking lot in a ravine about 15 feet behind the parking lot. And that was the loudest train I ever heard. I thought it, I thought it was a train coming <laughs> right through the bed. It was just, it was amazing. Amazingly bad, but it was okay. Okay, it's so that- to laugh about it Yeah, now. so that's the window screen. They're really pretty simple. So we got that. Uh, the television, I like the television some people don't like it because it's, it's a little small, but it's a television and you're sitting this far, you know, what? Oh, it's a 12 volt 12 yes. television too, so you don't turn the inverter on. Yes, this that's the beauty. This television runs on 12 volts, so you don't have to have your inverter on. Making heat and using power. All you got to do, is, if that little light's red, if it's not red, there's a 12 volt plug right here. You plug that in, if that light's red, you take the remote, you get the red button, Oh, my batteries are getting weak too, so I have to, I have to buy some new batteries, I just haven't done it yet. Oh, plus if you drop it, they fall out, so that's the problem too. But anyway, check your batteries. But if you don't have your remote, another wonderful thing is on the back side, there's a little mini remote. Yeah, it's built in. That great. That's really cool. Okay, so hit the red button, it should turn blue, and I like this because you have to scan for your television channels and on the coach and beyond it's a one-step process her case is on our pleasure way it was a multi-step so basically on the remote you hit the menu button like that and you see the screen here now you hit the left or the right button if you hit left you're, you're there immediately if you hit the right, you just got to toggle over to it. Then you hit the down button on the remote. You hit the down button again. Now you're in auto scan. Hit OK. Hit the right button to go to yes. And hit OK. And now it's scanning televisions uh, for channels, local over the air channels. On our pleasure way, we had to first go to the antenna and scan because the antenna would rotate up there on the roof. You had to go to the antenna, scan there. And then after that completed, then you had to go to the television and scan again. So I like this, it's just a one scan. And um, we're in San Antonio right now. So we're gonna get a lot of channels. Usually right about here is when channels show up. You're looking for digital, that R-F-C-H we're, I guess we're not certain what that is, but it's certainly not channels that you can watch. Yeah. So we got four right now. Mm -hmm. Usually about here you get something, and here you get something. But if there's a big city, you might get a whole bunch of stuff in between. So if you're over here and it says zero, don't worry. You, it can stay zero all the way over here, and then you might get five or six or so. But uh, this is the process of scanning right now. You can see it's picked up... Uh, 16 so far. I think it's going to get about 60 channels here. And they're not all great. Yeah, they're not all great, that's for sure. But in a big city, you'll find some good ones to yeah. watch. You're almost guaranteed to get a home shopping network channel. 
you might get nothing else, but you get Home Shopping Network. You get PBS a lot. And then you'll get PBS. And then you might get uh, some of the old cool stations I like, like Comet or uh, uh, just old channels. Like, you know, you can watch Gunsmoke or, uh, uh, oh gosh, just old Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone, yeah, just those old channels. But there you go. See, we've already got 41 channels so far. And I think it's going to get about 60 or so. Now, I could hit exit and get out of that. I bet you got a few um, Latin channels here. Yeah, there'll be that. There'll be, there'll be some, uh, uh, some plenty of shopping channels, though. <laughs> plenty of shopping. So, if you have a shopping addiction for, like, Home Shopping Network, you might want to watch out for that. Because I might end up with a new Chotsky in the, in the van. So let's see. Okay. And I think I can just go ahead and exit out of that if I wanted to. I can. Uh, it's it's almost done. So, but this is the remote for the TV, and this is the remote for the DVD player. If I were to turn on the DVD player and put a DVD in there, it'll just automatically switch over to the input for that. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got a channel, and let's see. These are your the channels, so it's got all these channels. And a charge, that's some old stuff there. And you got your volume. Oh, look, a nice snake. Oh, no, it's an alligator. So, as the volume comes up, you can hear it. CBS remembers the light and the legacy of Congressman Johnson. But, um, let me just throw in a DVD. I think, in the I think I've got one in there. Okay. So I'm going to turn on the, the controller for the DVD. And it says it's loading. And since there was a DVD in there, see it switches over automatically to the DVD player, which is the Jensen. And then, okay, if I turn off the DVD player, which is up here, I just turn it off, the screen goes blank because there's no input. So you have to come back to the input button here and press that, toggle up to TV, and you're back to normal. So when you're watching TV, it does that. When you put in a DVD player, it automatically goes to the DVD. But when you turn off the DVD player, it stays on DVD, so you have to switch back. So there's that. There's also another little control panel back here. This is the same as the front one, except it's smaller. And then Firefly, is that a Firefly panel? Yeah, Firefly. It does exactly the same as the front one, it's just smaller. Now some Beyonds, they still have push buttons back here. It just depends on when the production was made. There's two USB ports here that you can charge with, and a 12 volt and a 110 outlet here, uh, up here. This is kind of an important thing too, is there's this right here, if you can stand up to see it. This is your uh, antenna. If that light is not green, it's not gonna work. And you push this in like that, you turn it off. That's the amplifier. If, you, if you're not picking up any channels, see my, right here, I just went to no yeah, signal, signal, because it lost that. So you turn that on, it's gotta be green, and your antenna works. So, Could you uh, screw it into the top or the bottom one? Uh, this is for a satellite. This it belongs in the bottom one. It, you shouldn't have to move that. Okay. So that takes care of the television. And the little red uh, is your uh, is, Nimble pet monitor. Yeah, this is for our pet monitor. That's for us. We have for pet, our dog. Yeah, we have uh, the Nimble RV pet safety, and I also have security cameras and different things throughout like that that we've added. So that takes care of that. On this side over here, there's also the same charging right down here low. There's also a charging center there. Uh, the same thing. All right. Let's see, uh, close this. Oh, and this also acts as a radio too. You can put in hit and play a radio. So, but we just use it for a DVD player. You got a pantry here. There's a cloak uh, uh, hanging rod here, but it's kind of short. These shelves do come out. It's a little complicated. You have to push these little tabs in on the front and the back one and 
kind of rotate the shelf up sideways and pull it out. Close that. Microwave. This is a basic standard. It's a high point microwave. It's not convection. It just works like any normal microwave you'd have in your house. Uh, you can turn it on, start, stop. It's got the protective film on it still. We haven't taken that off. The refrigerator, the um, it's a Nova Cool, and it's a 12 volt model. Uh, some of the earlier ones were 12 volts, 120 volts, and it would switch back and forth. And they upgraded that. They, there's a, a service bulletin where they change it just to be 12 volt. But basically, there's a little latch here that keeps it from opening. You open that up like that, and you just kind of lift up on this handle, and there's the door to open it. And this is your thermostat to control it. And a lot of people have had problems with the cooling because there's a tray that normally goes here underneath this. It's pretty icy today. Yeah. We've been out on the road over two months. Maybe we should defrost it. Yeah. And this ice right here, or the tray right there, would keep the cold air from coming down. So a lot of people recommend taking that tray out. It's a little plastic tray. It just slides in this channel. So we took that out, and it's been working great. Same thing with the freezer below. Lift that up. And there's your, this is, if you want something really cold, put it in here. This is the coldest thing. This is cold, but that's colder. So that, and you close that. Um, your fan here, you can also manually open this by twisting it. And up front, the only thing left, I think, would be, watch that rug right there, is the toilet, the bathroom. So. Ugh. See that? There we go. So basically, this is the bathroom, and you've got a hot and cold water here, just like a normal kitchen faucet. This comes out your shower, and it's also very tight, but you can pivot it so you can get more space here. Uh, this right here is the soap dispenser. People love them, people hate them. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little button here you push up. You can open that up. It's right here. And you can see, you can take these bottles out. You just pull this out like that. You take that cap off it. We emptied you, that one. Yeah, that one's empty. You put it back in there. You close this down and it snaps. It's done. Uh, the mirror comes in and out. You can take the shower here. And you can hook it up here, but I don't know why. Um, to me, that wouldn't work good for me because one, if I'm standing up in the shower, it's just here. I find it easier just to hold it in my hand and spray myself. So there's the shower. You have a toilet paper holder. If you're taking a shower, you just rotate, you roll that up, your toilet paper's not hanging out. You close that, water's not gonna go in your toilet paper. You leave it open, you take a shower, you might have a wet, soggy roll of toilet paper. It works real well, too. Your paper's yeah. good and dry. You good and done. dry. Uh, as for the toilet, let me turn the water pump back on. I'll get water pumps on. It's always best to leave water in the toilet. Leave so much water in the toilet, you know, give or take. It keeps that little black seal from drying out because if that black seal dries out, it's expensive to replace it. If it dries out, it, fumes are going to come out of your toilet or your black tank. And it's not the best thing to smell. So you got that, you flush it, there's a pedal on the side, that's done. A very important thing about showering is if you're going to take a shower in here, is this little lip right here. This is what keeps the water from coming out of the shower out onto the floor. If you're parked at an angle, if, if, if your van is higher on the driver's side, you have a bowl like this. When you go like that, it's going to hold a lot less water before it overflows. So a big tip when you park, if you're going to be taking showers that day or that night, is park with the driver's side of the van tilted just a little bit lower. Not a lot, you know, just a little bit lower, which effectively raises that edge and it scoots all the water over to this drain hole right here, because that's where the water drains. 
So that's a, a, a really good tip is, is to make sure if you're going to be showering to have it sloped so water drains to that spot. And another thing we recommend is, okay, this floor is kind of pebbled. So on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll be stepping in here maybe with your shoes on sometimes. So what we do is we just put this cheap little rubber-backed bath mat from Ikea down to keep the floor protected. When we shower, we remove it easy enough. And this is also where we keep our trash. We like our trash here. Um, so when we shower, out comes the mat, out comes the trash can. And then to dry it, you know, it's a good time to clean your bathroom once you've taken a shower. You use maybe some, um, I use a spick and span that I like. I spritz it on the walls and maybe wipe it down with a paper towel or I use Lysol wipes to wipe it down. And then what I like to do, let me show everybody because I like doing this. It kind of keeps the bathroom fresh. Uh, I can get to it. We have a fan. It's a 12 volt fan. So we finish showering, we wiped it out. And then I'll open the doors and well, without taking the cord off, I'm going to tell you about it without taking the cord off. Okay, it, it pivots. The cord's kind of annoying here. Yeah, take the cord off. Take the cord off. Where's the yeah. even, you probably wound it up last time, didn't uh -huh. you? Did a really good job. Yeah, hold the camera. Okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead and show it thoroughly, right? Yeah, if you're going to do it, might as well do it right. Okay. Spike says, huh, shower time. Spike had a bath today. The dirt's a little, well, it's been raining in San Antonio, crazy. Okay. It's a little bit of black mud here. So what we'll do, okay, so we've wiped it out, still damp in there. So I'll clip it on the door and then I'll open this one. And also, stick it back in here. The shower curtain's wet, right? So I'll kind of, well, these towels are dry, so they wouldn't be here. I would take the shower curtain. I would kind of hook it on some of these um, command strip hooks we put in here. So the shower curtain is kind of draped up here. And then I'll put this little flap in here and I'll aim the uh, fan so that it's effective. It aims in quite a few ways. And I'll turn it on and let this blow for maybe 15 minutes. And it does an excellent job of drying out your curtain and drying out the bathroom so that it doesn't get uh, damp in there and moldy or say it's almost brand new yeah it's it's really cool i like the fan in the bathroom that's a 12 volt fan yeah, that's you can also get a 110 volt fan we just plug it in back here yeah and then of course there's a lot of times you might want a fan around here yeah yeah at night or maybe like spike if it's really hot and we're not running the ac we might just put the fan on him yeah but you know spike's important yeah Okay. okay, and uh, so we don't anyway. So I recommend this nice soft mat. I don't recommend. I personally do not recommend a bamboo insert here because um, you're stepping on bamboo and there's a potential of damaging your shower floor. Yeah. All yeah. I want to do is have a nice soft mat that will keep the dirt off the floor. Yeah, the bamboo and it's easily washable. Right. But if you put a bamboo mat in there, one of those, one of those metal. Uh, wooden bamboo mats if it's not properly contoured you could be putting a lot of stress in just little spots on that floor and i have seen uh, one article where somebody had cracked their floor i believe it was in the pleasure way by using a bamboo yeah. shower mat yeah, and they were looking for how to get that fixed yeah. which means you got to get somebody that can fix yeah. fiberglass or plastic or Ooh. Maybe replace the whole what thing. What a pain, huh? Yeah, so the little rug is a great idea. So I believe that's about everything. Let's go out. He's not had it in yeah, here. Yeah, he's ready to get out of here. Spike has been enjoying being in the house. Yeah. And being on the couch. And that's where I'm going to go now because it's kind of warm here. Get this again. Okay. Okay. All right. So if you got any questions, uh, just drop me a, a message in the video here and I'll try my best to answer them for you. But uh, basically, um, everything works great. Uh, just have to learn how to use it. 
a lot of it's really simple a lot of it's a little complicated but it's not something that that you can't learn um, I mean I'm still learning a lot of the stuff myself and for for example now we're down to 97 it's, it's still it's, hot it's still it's hot insanely here. hot in San Antonio <laughs> yeah. I mean look at that little bush well that bush <laughs> is from Helen Keller's birthplace it's a boxwood and yes I probably need to give it some water but I'm not gonna uh, it's been on the road. It's been trying to grow for the last two months. Yeah. So cool. I think it's doing pretty well. It's, it's, it's still, still green. It's still got all the green to it. Yeah. And um, one of my uh, subscribers gave this to Spike. Spike, come here, Spike. Squirrel, get your squirrel. Get your Spike, look. So thank you for the squirrel. Spike's really been enjoying it. And uh, thank you all. Yeah, thank Good you very people. much. So we're going to be uh, ending the video here. If you got any questions, like I said, just drop me a line, and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Uh, other than that, stay safe. Enjoy your new beyond. It'll take you places. Who knows where you'll go? Uh, just enjoy yourself and have a wonderful day. Spike, where are you going? Get your squirrel. Squirrel.